singing a song as we go along, walking in the window of the land. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review I'll Be Home for Christmas. So I'll Be Home for Christmas stars Jonathan Taylor Thomas from Home Improvement, Jessica Biel, and this film, well, I'm gonna actually give the plot synopsis to Kevin Falk because he will definitely go more in depth with the plot synopsis as well as his overall review for I'll Be Home for Christmas. So Kevin Falk, take it away. Thank you, Tony, and hey guys, it's Kevin again to review a movie that I really did not know uh, how this was going to be initially. And that movie is none other than the 1998 Christmas film, I'll Be Home for Christmas. Like I said, I didn't really know much about this movie going into it. Uh, I just knew that this is a film that came out in 1998 that some people really love, some people really hate, and I figured I've always wanted to watch it, why not watch it with Tony? And I really didn't know how it was initially going to be, but oh, after watching it, wow, do I regret picking this movie to be the one to review, because this movie sucks. I hated I'll Be Home for Christmas. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I hated this movie. It is everything a Christmas movie it shouldn't be, and I'm going to get into that, but let's get to the plot of I'll Be Home for Christmas, which the plot of this movie is one of the most shallow plots I have heard for a Christmas movie ever, probably. I mean, the plot for this movie is, is fucking terrible. Basically, we focus on this character, Jake Wilkinson, who goes to this college in uh, California, and basically he's, you know, got this great life there and everything. He hasn't been home uh, for the holidays since, like, his mother died and everything. Everything, and his father remarried, and basically, you know, he hasn't seen his family since. So, a few days before Christmas Eve, his father basically kind of negotiates him into coming back uh, to Christmas, but not for any sort of good deed. You know, he doesn't want to come back to visit his family or anything. No, he wants to come back to get a Porsche because his father promises him that if you come back to Christmas Eve, I will give you the Porsche, and that is essentially why Jake wants to come back. He doesn't want to come back for any reason, but just to get the car. And while he tries to do that, you know, they have this Christmas party, and he gets into a sort of a scuffle with a couple guys who then end up kidnapping him as Santa Claus, um, and his rival, basically leaving his rival, Eddie, to, uh, gets with Jake's girlfriend, Allie, and Jake basically is stranded in the deserts in California for the rest of the movie, trying to get home to his family and, uh, to get that Porsche, and that basically is the plot of this movie overall, but let's just get in this movie and talk about what I really want to talk about, and talk about how bad this thing really is. So let's get to the acting in this movie, because I will definitely say that I don't think all the acting is terrible here. I do think that the acting is really one of the only things I can really compliment in this movie. Let's talk about Jonathan Taylor Thomas, because I really do like him as an actor. Uh, in the 90s, he made a lot of really bad movies, and... This is one of them. I mean, his character is completely insufferable as Jake Wilkinson. This is someone who you hate from the second you see him. He's so perfect. There's nothing wrong with him. He's, you know, a dick. Uh, he doesn't really have anything, you know, like I said, other than his mother dying and everything. There's not really much going on with him that's that bad. And you just can't stand him. I mean, he's just such... Uh, a pretty boy, really. That's really all he is. He's there because girls think he's attractive, but he does have some sort of charm. Like, you never really tell he's trying in this role. The problem is they don't really give him much to work with, and I really don't feel that this comedy really plays to his strengths, really. I mean, I really don't feel that the character really goes with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I think that this character was very flat, very boring, and they really didn't know what else to do with him besides just making him an insufferable jerk, and... It's very hard to care about this character when he's kind of just whining throughout the whole movie and want to get back home and saying all these rude things to his sister and things like that. And I really just could not stand him, honestly. And yeah, there have definitely been, you know, unlikable jerks in movies. I mean, see things like A Christmas Carol, for example, where you have Ebenezer Scrooge. I mean, that's... That's the best example of one. The problem is this movie doesn't really have any pathos for him. There's no reason to really care about Jake. There's no reason, there's nothing to really get behind with this character. And because of that, he just comes across as a selfish jerk and really doesn't do, the movie really doesn't do anything else to try to make him anything more than that. It really does affect uh, the movie overall. And definitely, Jonathan Taylor Thomas is the best thing about this movie, but his character is probably one of the worst things, definitely. 
Now, Jessica Biel plays his girlfriend, Allie, and once again, a terrible character. I mean, this is someone who, uh, I think, really has no character whatsoever. She's just there to be the love interest and go through all these different situations, and Jessica Biel isn't bad. Like, you can tell she's having a good time making this movie, but you can also tell she's kind of bored in the role. Like, she really wants to be doing something else, and... The movie doesn't really give her much to work with, you know, she's very much the straight man in this movie that's not really cracking a ton of jokes, and I can't really remember anything that's substantial with her character. I really did not like her. However, let's talk about Adam La Vagorna as Eddie. What is the point of this character, honestly? I mean, this character is just here to be a bully for Jake. He's just there to get close to Allie. And there is this horrible subplot involving these two, where these two at first hate each other, and then they actually start to get closer throughout the movie, and... Really, I mean, these th he was a terrible character. I really do not think that Adam Lavagorna was good in this movie. He seemed like he was just trying to be the villain, and it really did not work at all. Again, they didn't really try to humanize him, and he definitely was really, really bad here. I really did not like uh, his character at all. I thought he definitely was pretty bad. And like I said, the direction they go with their character made really no sense to me. But that is nothing compared to, uh, really how bad, uh, some of the other characters are here. I mean, his parents in the movie, Gary Cole and Eve Gordon aren't bad, but they're really not given much to work with. I can't really say much about them. I really want to talk about Andrew Lauer as Nolan because, wow, was he bad. This is a truck driver that Jake encounters on... Uh, one of his attempts to get back home, and he is one of the most insufferable characters in this movie. He's given a lot of the comedic lines, but because of how bad of an actor Andrew Lauer is, and how bad at line delivery especially, this comes across so flat, so annoying, and you're laughing at all the things you shouldn't be laughing at. I'm not laughing at his jokes, I'm laughing at his facial expressions, I'm laughing at how bad he really is here, because he truly is something terrible. I mean, he's definitely something to witness, but he was terrible in this movie. And then you have Sean O'Brien is Officer Max, who is this brief cop that has this ridiculous storyline involving this girl that he uh, has had an affair with and that he wants to get back together with, and there's this horrible scene where he's professing his love to her and so on, and Sean O'Brien cannot sing to save his life. It doesn't make it funny, it just makes it very annoying, and that's the best way to describe this entire cast. They're all very annoying, they're very cartoony, but that is nothing compared to the rest of what I really want to talk about. Because as bad as the acting is and as phoned in I think everyone is, because everyone really is phoning it in in this movie, it's mainly because of the directing and the writing. Because, wow, I mean, the directing in this movie is terrible. It really is. I mean, this is probably one of the most anti-Christmas films I have seen, well, not anti, but one of the most un-Christmassy Christmas films I've seen in such a long time. The only thing that makes the movie a Christmas movie is that it takes place during Christmas. Nothing about it has that really great Christmas feel to it, that, you know, warmth and love and giving and things like that. The movie does not understand that, and... Arlene Sanford does not know when to quit with the jokes. I think that's the main problem here, is that he does not know when to quit with the jokes. The entire movie is just doing joke after joke after joke, and none of them are funny. They're all, like, lowest common denominator type humor, and none of the jokes really made me laugh. I honestly never really laughed much throughout this movie. I found a lot of it to be really, really cringy, honestly, and I really don't think that any of the jokes really work for that matter. I thought most of the uh, jokes just seemed very off. Uh, but then he tries to do some heart, and it does not work whatsoever. He tries to bring heart into the last scene of this movie, and it doesn't work because it's literally the last scene. The entire movie, Jake has been nothing but this insufferable jackass who does nothing more than just want a car and... Then you try to turn him around and give him heart at the end of the movie, and it does not work whatsoever. Arlene Sanford did not at all know how to direct this movie. I didn't think that he was at all the right choice, and I think definitely that didn't work. But the writing is really the thing that very much pissed me off in this movie, because like I said... You have all this movie that is filled to the brim with so many unlikable, shallow characters, but the problem is the movie doesn't really know how to humanize them and give them some sort of weakness, something for us to, you know, get behind. And the movie really doesn't know how to do that, and it really did piss me off, I have to say. And sometimes they'll say, okay, it worked really well, 
But the movie didn't know really when to quit. I mean, there's nothing funny about Jake except that he's a dick and that he wants this car. It's not funny that he wants the car. It just shows how shallow he really is. I mean, this is a college kid. You would think that he'd be a little bit more mature than just to get home because he wanted a car. I mean, it just seemed like a really dumb conflict overall. I was not at all into the story in this movie. I found the story to be very by the numbers, and there really isn't much else to it besides him being stranded in the desert. And there's so many things that don't make any sense. Like, there's a scene in this movie where they talk about how it never snows in California, because it doesn't. It doesn't snow in California. He had the snow machine go off, and he was trying to impress, you know, Allie and everything. But then there's a scene in the movie where it randomly starts snowing, yet it never snows in California. The snow thing is not on. Why is it snowing randomly? It just made no sense whatsoever. Things like that really do weigh the movie down, and that really did very much affect the movie. Uh, and like I said, the movie just does not know when to quit with the jokes. I didn't find a single joke funny. I found it to be very boring, honestly. When I wasn't, when it wasn't, you know, when I wasn't, uh you know, uh, cringing at what was going on. I was bored. I really was bored throughout a lot of this movie. And it's because it's just a very repetitive film of him going to these different people who each person that he went to was more insufferable than the last one. Like, I thought that the, uh, I, I thought that, um that Nolan was bad, but then we got to Officer Max, and then we got to the other Santas, and then we got to that hotel, and each one just got worse and worse as it went on, and the movie's just kind of like a clusterfuck of all these different places that Jake goes to, and it really does not work at all. Uh, I thought that that definitely did not work. But then you get to the subplot in this movie, which, like I said, it does in fact involve adultery, and it's one of the dumbest conflicts this movie could have done. It's only here, I think, to give the movie a genuine conflict, to give Jake and Allie some sort of romantic tension, because, oh, they're a couple, we gotta give them romantic tension, and I really saw no purpose to give these two romantic tension. I, I really did not understand that at all. It seemed like it was only there to be this thing where and just kind of add attention to the story, and it's just so shallow. It's such a shallow conflict. It's not even really that deep, and it really doesn't make much sense. You know, why would Ali suddenly like Eddie? Why would any of that really go down? I mean, it just didn't really, none of that conflict made any sense to me. I didn't really understand why they took the movie in that direction, and I just thought that definitely wasn't very well done. And the movie really does gloss over a lot of interesting things that could have made Jake a very compelling character. Like, we could have gone through this arc where Jake maybe does these things because he's grieving over his mother, and that this is the first Christmas where his mother isn't there. That would have been a very interesting conflict if they did that. That Jake, you know, maybe just can't go back to his house because his mother's not there, it's not the same. But the movie never really talks about it. The movie just kind of glosses over and pretends that it doesn't matter, when in fact that stuff does matter. I mean, you're giving him a genuine and reason to go back to the house, why aren't you talking about the fact that, hey, my mother's gone, that's why I don't want to go back, you know, getting him a car shouldn't be the thing that gets him back, it's such a, you know, it, if he's that easy to, you know, uh, manipulate, and he's that easy to get him into doing something, I mean, how am I supposed to like this character, really, I mean, on one hand, you have him being very insufferable, and not wanting to come back to his house, and him wanting to get a car, it just didn't really make much sense, especially because he's a college kid, you think he'd have his own car, which he does have his own car, why does he need his father's car, they don't ever give a real reason, he just kind of wants it, and to me, it just seems like this kid is a complete insufferable little shit who clearly got everything when he was younger. He never heard the word no. He never was disciplined. And his father is one of the most... I uh, probably push over dads I've seen in such a long time. Like, his father is so pushover. He never disciplines his son. He never really does anything to threaten him. And it just didn't all feel real. Nothing about it felt real. It felt very cartoony. And it felt very half-baked. And by the time the movie was over, I just couldn't find any more enjoyment in this story. And it really did upend the movie a lot, I have to say. It really took what could have been a very fun Christmas movie and made it very dumb, very cartoony 
me and just really, really just kind of sad, really. I mean, it was very sad. It was just very shallow, and it really sucks that this is the kind of Christmas movie that we're getting, and especially because John Taylor Thomas left Home Improvement for this. I have no idea why. I don't know why that sort of thing happened. Uh, the editing here, I guess, is fine. Cinematography is whatever. Uh, you get the, the cinematography actually is terrible, though. Like, there's one scene where Allie and Eddie are in the car, and we maybe go through, like, five backgrounds of it being day, night, day, night, and it's extremely noticeable. Uh, that was pretty bad, too, but again, it was the 90s, so, I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not, that, that's no excuse, but, you know, the technology wasn't really up to date like it was today, and I guess the score was okay, like, I like the songs they play in the movie, but other than that, there really isn't much else I can recommend. But overall, guys, All Beyond for Christmas is a pretty terrible movie that is one of the most shallow Christmas movies I've seen in such a long time, and by far one of the worst that I really couldn't wait to be over. It's very repetitive, it's very boring, it has one of the most insufferable characters, uh, Some, uh, most of the characters are very insufferable in a very long time, it's not real, it doesn't understand Christmas at all, and I strongly recommend you guys do not watch it, it's not a movie I would prefer to review on Tony's channel, but... But I am going to give I'll Be Home for Christmas overall a 1 out of 5 or a D minus. So overall, guys, that's my review of I'll Be Home for Christmas. Thank you, Tony, for letting me be on this video. Always enjoy doing this. Not at all the movie that I would have preferred to review. But, you know, that's it for this video. Check out my channel if you guys haven't seen it. And now, back to Tony. Thank you so much, Kevin Falk, for reviewing I'll Be Home for Christmas. Oh... This movie was bad. Disney, I don't know what Disney was thinking with this film because I felt ashamed. I mean, okay, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, you get the guy from Home Improvement as Randy. I love him as Randy. I love Home Improvement. Home Improvement is one of my favorite shows. And he does this movie. This is his starring role. Yeah, maybe not the best decision he's made because I'll Be Home for Christmas is one of the worst holiday films I've seen. Dealing around this protagonist that's very unlikable, and then you also have this character named Eddie that I also don't really give a shit about in this film. Now, of course, this character named Jake, the only reason he actually would go back home just to celebrate Christmas with his family is so he can get this Porsche from his dad. It's not because he wants to be with his family around the holidays. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just because of a Porsche. That's his only reason to go back home. If it wasn't for the dad making the deal with him to come home by six on Christmas Eve to get that Porsche, he wouldn't be coming home at all. That's already a reason to despise this character. That is his driving reason and I couldn't stand that. The moment you see his character, he's already unlikable. For the most part, this journey that he takes is just so stupid and it just goes out of nowhere. Like he runs with this freaking truck driver, which, oh my God, that character, by the way, was so dumb and so annoying oh yeah and the voice too doesn't even help at all that was just oh my god and then there's this police officer and my goodness this police officer it it, it was truly un unbelievable but then along the way he actually has to help the police officer and then this little truck driver, just shenanigans go all over the place. And not to mention that this film actually cuts his subplot with this Eddie guy and Jessica Biel. It was very horribly written, just like with the main storyline. I really did not care about what was happening in this film. I did not really laugh that much when it comes to the film. Yes, here and there, I'll laugh from time to time, but nothing too huge. There is one scene that did actually get a very good laugh out of me, and I'll get to that when I mention the pros. The cinematography was pretty decent with this film. I did think the cinematography was decent. 
And since I am actually going more to my positives, I'll go ahead and just say this. Jonathan Taylor Thomas he has an unlikable protagonist, but he was actually pretty good in this film. Jessica Biel, although I really did not care about her character, she was pretty good in this film as well. I did like the father character. I did like the sister character. The father's girlfriend. She's there. It's whatever. The characters I actually like are not even in this film that much. So it's hard to actually enjoy this film when the characters I actually like, such as the father or the sister, are rarely even in this film. I was just so annoyed. I was so angry watching this film. Uh, the execution of it was really bad too. Of course, once you get to the third act, I'm not going to spoil anything, but it comes way out of left field. Jake, the reason he gets stranded in the middle of the desert, dressed as Santa Claus, is because Eddie and the guys actually drugged him at this party. Okay, so now I'll just get to what was the scene that gave me the biggest laugh. That is actually the Santa Marathon. It is this race scene, and I'm not gonna lie, that was actually a very entertaining moment. Sure, was it stupid? Yeah, but it was so stupid that it was funny. Unlike most of this movie, where it's just so stupid, that's just plain stupid. But that Santa scene was actually so dumb that it was funny, and if I'll be home for Christmas was just like that Santa race scene, this honestly could have been a very entertaining Christmas film, but no, they failed. They absolutely failed to make a Christmas movie that was, well, of course, written well, because this is not a very well-written movie, better direction, and better characters. But then, of course, when you're following the protagonist, it's hard to just get into this film. This film goes all over the place as far as where the storyline is taking it. There's no charm to it. There's no sense of wonder. I honestly hate this film, you guys. I couldn't believe that Disney actually even thought about making this. It is a waste of Jonathan Taylor Thomas's talent because he deserves better than this. Jessica Biel deserves better than this. Honestly, all the actors in this film deserve better than what this piece of crap delivered. I'm gonna give I'll Be Home for Christmas one and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about I'll Be Home for Christmas. And I actually want to thank my guest star, Kevin Falk, for coming here to review I'll Be Home for Christmas. He's a very cool dude, you guys, so if you guys want to check out his channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.